thank you very much for inviting me such uh, this kind of very fantastic uh, event to back Harry's uh, retirement. Especially, I'd like to say thank you for uh, Steve Oi for uh, inviting me this opportunity. And it is actually indeed my great honor giving a talk in this uh, precious occasion with other distinguished scientists in the world to Mark Harry's retirement. Okay. And so today's my topic is welding science with Harry, uh, but I just like to add some subtitle uh, rail to ship. Right. Um, my name is Kazutoshi Ichikawa, and I'm currently working for a Graduate School of Engineering at Tohoku University, Japan. And actually, my career uh, was started uh, as a research scientist in Welding Research Center, Nippon Steel Corporation, Japan. And after several years, for the engagement of this laboratory, I joined the PT group, Cambridge University, as a PT student uh, and get a supervision of Harry. Uh, it was the 1994 to 1996. And after that, uh, I back to Nippon City Corporation again. And uh, very recently, I became a visiting professor at Tohoku University, and now I'm working full timely in Tohoku University in Sendai, Japan. Uh, but uh, I am still uh, supported financially by Nippon Steel Corporation even now. Uh, actually, uh, this is a photo taken at the, uh, my last day in PT group in the department, and this is actually a department common room in 1996 and obviously uh, Harry is at the center of the table here and I am here and I and next of me uh, the, here is uh, Nobuhiro Fujita he is also working for uh, Nippon Steel Corporation and there are some students here uh, including uh, Sari Parker from British Steel and I personally like this picture very well uh, because, you know, here there is um, Aaron Cotter. He is a very much uh, famous scientist in metallurgy. So I am very much proud of this picture uh, with uh, Aaron Cotter here. First of all, I'd like to just re briefly review the past achievement, uh, mostly uh, Harry's contribution in welding science. And secondly, I'd like to show some latest progress of myself, uh, which is about introduction of recent achievement in steel products. Uh, and that is actually high ductile steel plates for ship structures. Uh, this topic is uh, based on my uh, latest work when I was in uh, Nippon Steel Corporation. And finally, I just like to discuss something about uh, future prospects in material science, especially in steel products. Yes, um, I think many of you know this uh, journals, which is a science and technology warning and joining. And Harley was uh, one of the establishing member of this journal. And this is actually a very fast volume of the journal. And it was my a uh, great honor uh, to uh, uh, publish my paper in this very first issue of the journals, which is on the model for solidification cracking in low alloy steel with metal. Uh, this paper is written with, of course, uh, Harry, and this is the uh, application of a neural network on the solidification cracking in low alloy with metal. And these days, uh, many people discuss on artificial intelligence in material science, but I think uh, Harry is one of the uh, very first scientists who introduced neural network in material science and welding. 
And another contribution in welding society by Harry is a mathematical, mathematical modeling of world phenomena, which is a conference uh, regularly held in Graz, Austria. So this is a famous as Graz conference. And the proceedings are very much unique of this conference and, and Harry was the series editor of the uh, conference of in, held in Graz. And there are lots of uh, proceedings books, something. And the proceedings books of these things are very much unique. And there is no, I, as, as far as I remember, there is no limitation of the length of the paper so that sometimes the thickness of the book uh, more than one inch, so very big book. But I think these books can be a, a very good legacy in the future to study the welding science, especially modeling, uh, numerical modeling of world phenomena in the future. So um, as I said uh, earlier, um, Harry is one of the uh, earliest uh, scientists who introduced neural network uh, in material science. And I, when I was in Nippon Steel, I applied the neural net network model to actual development on the welding materials. This is an, one of the examples of such uh, application. And the program is provided by Harry and his student. Um, well, yes, uh, one of his student, Lalam. And so, uh, for example, this, is, um, this shows the uh, effect of molybdenum on tensile strength. Uh, I actually developed welding materials for building constructions, which has a very uh, higher tensile strength with uh, good fire resistant properties. So for some uh, reason, we have to have uh, welding materials, which has a uh, weld metal uh, higher than uh, base metal uh, strength, which is about uh, 650 uh, in tensile strength. So, but uh, this solid line shows the, uh, the data from the existing welding materials so that we have to improve the tensile strength, something like this. So we made a calculation using the neural network modeling. So we uh, get some this kind of line with a uh, proper error bus here. So as agreement between existing data and this uh, calculation data is very good. Based on this uh, uh, confirmation, I, dry, uh, I uh, defined necessary uh, uh, molybdenum concentration is about 0.6. So uh, as shown in this uh, square plot, I made some uh, practical uh, actual welding, ma welding materials. So then uh, I, uh, I, I found the property is uh, sufficient. So uh, this welding materials uh, is actually uh, commercialized in actual uh, project. Then, um, due to these calculations, we uh, can develop practical welding materials with a minimum number of uh, uh, experiments. Uh, this is actually an example of the practical in application in the building, in which is, has about uh, 80 millimeter thick plate and this building is totally covered with grasses, beautiful grasses, and you can uh, see the actual steel structure uh, through this uh, grass structure. So if you come to Tokyo, Japan, you can actually see the uh, steel structures uh, designed by uh, neural network. Okay, and then I try to move another uh, topics of my presentation. I'd like to introduce uh, one of my uh, latest progress in, in high ductile, highly ductile steel plates for ship structures. 
So today I'd like to discuss on the ship structures. Uh, and actually, but Harry had worked very well on the railway still. So uh, this is a picture taken in one day of uh, open day in the university in 1996. Uh, this is not obviously myself, but uh, one of my son here. And he joined the University Open Days and uh, cooperated to present Harry's rail steel uh, using his uh, favorite toys of, uh, you know, uh, Thomas tank engine here. I'm not quite sure he could explain the Benedict rail steel at that time, but anyway, I suppose he was the youngest uh, people who uh, contributed in the uh, University Open Days. And anyway, and Hardy has worked very well on rail steel, but I, my uh, work is uh, for the uh, ship structures. Okay. And this is very much famous story on Titanic. And I, I, I know that uh, um, Professor Martin Strangwood uh, is still working on these uh, topics to find the uh, exact reason of the why uh, Titanic sink under the seawater. And this is a um, marine uh, accident uh, happened in 1912. And there are lots of uh, casualties af after this uh, accident. Uh, people very well know this sort of things. But this sort of um, collision accident of ships is not an historical issues. Even nowadays, this kind of uh, serious uh, ship uh, collision accident can happen uh, so often. So um, if you have this kind of collision accident in uh, very huge vessels, you may get some casualty of human being. And also we may get some uh, serious damage on ecosystem of oceans. So we have to avoid this kind of uh, collision accident. So I'd like to discuss the, uh, this kind of social issues with a relationship with material science today. So as this table shows, as even nowadays, large scale collision still occurs between ships. And very recently, actually, in this year in Japan, collision between a uh, large ship and a chemical tanker occurred. And unfortunately, uh, three uh, crews were missing in this uh, accident. So as a responsibility of material scientists, I like to, uh, I thought we have to avoid this kind of serious accident. And sometimes, we get some oil spill, something like this, which pollute the oceans seriously and damage the ecosystem of the ocean. But this figure shows the um, ratio of the reason of the, uh, the uh, offshore uh, accident, a marine time accident, Actually, uh, collision and grounding occupies almost half of the reason of the uh, maritime accident. So we have to avoid collision and groundings in terms of improvement of materials. And the situation is very much serious indeed. And this is a sentence we can find in the uh, Oil Pollution Act of 1919 in US. So um, 
which regulate a very, uh, it applies unlimited liability to the incidents uh, caused by gross negligence or willful, willful uh, misconduct of the violation of an applicable federal safety construction or operating regulations. So we have to avoid the spill of the oil by the uh, collision of the vessels of ships. Ship designer tried to improve the situation. Uh, something like shown in this slide. So at the moment, for example, uh, large tanker has, for example, 12 tanks inside of the tank uh, ships at present. So they try to increase the number of tanks, for example, 18 tanks, which can uh, improve the safety of the ships. However, this kind of uh, in, uh, increase of the tanks may get some um, increase in steel weight. For example, or about we get some increase in 500 ton. Uh, and also building cost may increase about, you see, um, 844 pounds, uh, 844,000 pound. So um, this idea is not good uh, in the terms of uh, economy. So uh, next option can be a, a imagine that if you uh, increase thickness of uh, 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 width of the uh, how structure, for example, or uh, widen the width of uh, tanks, tanker, or uh, getting smaller uh, cargo space, you can improve the safety of the uh, ship structure. But uh, this kind of modification also uh, decrease the population efficiency or uh, can decrease the volume of the oil tanks. So this uh, modification is also is not good idea in terms of economy. So uh, as shown in this line, cost effective alternatives are required. Then Nippon Steel Corporation has organized some inter-industry uh, collaboration scheme with some shipbuilding yard and governmental research institute and so, uh, uh, classification society. So uh, if we think about stress strain curves, in order to uh, improve the crash worthiness, one option can be uh, imagined by improve or increase the tensile strength, something like this. So if you get this kind of uh, enhancement of the strength, you can get increased absorbed energy on collision, but this uh, modification may get some deterioration of toughness and wieldability. And also uh, we can uh, get some tear on large deformation by this modification. Uh, this uh, strength improvement is a good idea, for example, for the armor steel plate, but so this is not a good idea for the commercial vessels. Uh, then we try to uh, increase the uh, elongation ductility in order to get higher absorbed energy on collision. So next step is what is economically feasible re uh, rational uh, elongation? 
So in order to get such uh, information, I we uh, performed some FEM calculation on crash worthiness assessment. So we assumed uh, harshest scenario for the collision accident. So we have here collided ship A and colliding ship B. Both colliding and collided ships have identically designed uh, very large crude oil carrier. And colliding speed is uh, 12 knot, which is about uh, 14 miles per hour. This is very much reasonable assumption because uh, based on the statistics, uh, colliding collision speed is about 4.27 knot. So uh, 12 knot is a reasonable assumption. So we have here three calculation results with having a different improvement in erogation. For example, 30% higher than um, existing uh, regulation or 40% higher and 50% higher elongation. In this 30% uh, higher elongation, we still have this kind of tear lands in a hull. But if you get 40% or 50% higher uh, elongation, we do not have uh, tear at all on, on a hull structure. I'll show you more uh, higher resolution uh, picture here. So uh, we assumed this co colliding um, scenario. This is colliding ships and this is collided ship. So this picture uh, is an image from the inside of the uh, uh, collided ships. So in the case of conventional steels, you can see this kind of large tear on the ship structure. But if you apply highly ductile steels, you don't have any tear on the hull structure. So let me discuss how to improve the ductility or elongation in this uh, highly ductile steels. I have to excuse that uh, I don't, I'm not allowed to disclose the actual detailed information, I mean, uh, uh, numerical data, because, you know, um, uh, intellectual property is one of the first priority in the company. So that I'd like to discuss using this kind of schematic diagram. And so, but anyway, um, concept or philosophy is very much simple to uh, improve the ductility. We decrease the number of uh, inclusions such as manganese or uh, other inclusions. Also, we uh, minimize the size of these kind of inclusions by applying uh, advanced technology in uh, steel making. Also, we decrease the uh, elong, uh, dislocation density in this uh, uh, highly ductile steel. But in order to uh, compensate the tensile strengths, we uh, define the microstructure so that we can get almost identical tensile strengths between conventional steels and highly ductile steels. Also, we made um, reduction of the second uh, hard phase smaller to uh, get higher uh, elongation. Another key issue is that uh, we reduce the uh, variance of uh, hardness throughout the thickness. Conventional steel plate have some uh, distribution of the hardness, something like this. But in our ideal steel for elongation has a minimum uh, distribution of the hardness so that we can avoid the constant, uh, stress concentration and get a better uh, elongation. And 
So we made some publication shown in here. So if some of you are interested in this uh, issues, please find these uh, publications later. So uh, this is actually the uh, um, real stress strain curves comparison. So we get some higher elongation, 50% uh, higher than uh, conventional uh, steel regulations. But another issue is uh, some people do not believe such sort of FEM calculation. So uh, such sort of um, you know, suspicion or untrust or you know, a doubt is somehow reasonable because in the FEM calculation, we do not have any weld line. So that we made a minimum uh, number of experiment in uh, using a moderate structure shown in this here. So we designed a partial structure model with a redu reduced size compared to the actual ships. So uh, the size of about two millimeter in height, the plate thickness is uh, 12 millimeter. And uh, using the 2000 ton capacity of uh, testing rig, we push indenta to this uh, model structure. And we found that in a conventional steel, we can see this kind of large tear after the testing. But in this uh, highly ductile steel plate, we do not actually, we do not have any uh, tear on the surface of the structure. Let me show you um, movies of the testing. This is a conventional steel plate. Right. So indenta is moving this way. And finally, you can see large tear along the weld line here. And you can see crack here. But in this highly ductile steel case, we can see large deformation here. But we cannot see any large opening of tear on the surface. And then um, in order to Penetrate, penetrate this um, uh, new, new products into the market and spread in the market, we uh, made some calculation in economic effects based on the uh, existing uh, collision accident database uh, organized by International Maritime Organization. Uh, combination with a combination of this uh, database and newly developed mathematical uh, uh, model, we uh, estimated a financial loss in United, uh, US dollars. So uh, after, by this uh, calculations, we found that uh, nominal potential loss per ship per year can be expected is that uh, almost half compared to the uh, conventional steel. So uh, by this kind of economical calculations, uh, Japanese government offers uh, tax incentives, which is uh, if you apply this kind of uh, uh, highly ductile steel, you can get tax reduction. So this is very good news for our customers to employ this high advanced steel plate. Right. 
And this uh, steel plate has applied already to this part of the vessels. For the bulk carrier, which carries iron ore and coke. And our final target is to employ this material to the oil tankers. And we have already uh, shipped more than 50,000 ton plates for about 31 vessels in total. So, in, in the terms of business, this is very much successful materials. This is one of the example of the, our ships who employ highly ductile steel. Okay. And this is almost my uh, last slide. And I'd like to discuss about our future prospects of plate steel. And in the future, a near future, we have to get higher performance steels from new iron sources like electric furnace in order to uh, reduce uh, carbon di dioxide emission. And also uh, new agents such as ammonia have to be uh, carefully investigated for the carbon neutral society. So we need some uh, new steels to uh, carry this kind of new agent in near future. Uh, we also uh, get some application of vessels for seaborne in Arctic circles. This kind of things are required. Uh, okay, okay, this is almost end of my uh, talk. And uh, finally, I'd like to say thank you for Harry for teaching and guidance and kindness. I wish you the best of your luck and health on your retirement. And thank you very much, everything. Okay. Thank you, Ichikawa-san. Yeah. Professor Ichikawa, you uh, mentioned that uh, one of the future challenges would be applying uh, this still for uh, low temperature applications, uh, so Arctic uh, uh, regions. So how difficult would it be uh, to, uh, to move to this uh, kind of application so we won't have a, a titanic uh, uh, recurrence? Uh... Yes, and um, actually, um... In this kind of Arctic regions, we have to uh, think about the collision with iceberg, which is much harder than ship structure. You know, and in ship collision, a colliding ship can also be deformed, but in uh, collision with um, iceberg, iceberg does not uh, deform at all. So we must have some a uh, bit higher tensile strengths steel plate for this sort of you know vessels operated in the Arctic region. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have more questions? Uh, thank you for your very uh, impressive talk. I have one question about the first item of the future uh, prospect. And mm -hmm. when we use the electric furnace, you means that the new iron source means the uh, uh, scrap, maybe a steel scrap. Mm -hmm. So, yes. what is the most important uh, problem to produce high performance steel from the uh, steel scrap, in particular thick place for the thick place? Uh, yes, and the most important things is we have a uh, higher concentration of nitrogen in mm -hmm. uh, electric furnace steel. Also, we have some higher consideration in uh, impurities such as tin or you know, phosphorus and sulfur. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have to take care of such sort of impurity and nitrogen. You see, and in, in uh, steels made from you know, brass furnace, we can reduce the uh, nitrogen, but in electronic furnace, it still be uh, 
bit difficult to reduce such sort of nitrogen and so on. So high nitrogen content, what 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 is the most important problem in in the high nitrogen uh, in still containing high nitrogen? It is uh, maybe uh, impact toughness or something like that? Yes, toughness and variability mm -hmm. as well. So thank you. Uh, you just said that uh, with the electric uh, furnace, you uh, mm -hmm. don't have the same refining facility as with the blast furnace. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is no reason why you can't take the iron produced from an electric furnace and go to mm -hmm. a refining stage. Yes, that's correct. Actually, as someone try to uh, apply almost same process to the electric furnace still. So in, in near future, they can get rid of nitrogen, uh, which is almost same as blast furnace. But you know, tin or other impurities, it's a bit difficult to reduce. For example, tin is not, you know, oxidized. We, we cannot get oxidized tin. So, you know, it's a bit difficult thing. Thank you. So we have to carefully select the uh, scrap, which has a lower impurity concentration. Uh, so following on that, uh, do we need to design new uh, steel grades uh, that would be uh, intended to be produced from scrap and produced by this new uh, manufacturing ways, or could we still rely on uh, the pre-existing steel grades? I think steel grades should not be changed, you know, such kind of things are defined by the uh, performance, not from the uh, raw materials. So regulation should not be changed. 